What is Quran? Translations of Quran. The Quran al Karim is Nazmi Ilahi, divine verse. The lexical meaning of Nazm is to string pearls. It has been called Nazm also because words are arranged side by side like pearls. Words in the Quran al Karim, having been arranged by Allahu Ta'ala, descended in ayats. An angel named Jebrail Gabriel, recited the ayats with these words and letters, and Hadrat Muhammad, hearing them through his blessed ears, memorized them and immediately recited them to his companions. Allahu Ta'ala sent the Quran in the language of the Quraysh tribe. The Formation of Quran The Quran began to descend on the Qadr night, and it continued to descend for 23 years. As for the Taurat, the book that descended to Hadrat Musa, Moses, the Injil, the Bible, and all other books and heavenly pages. Each of them had descended as a whole, all at once. All of them resembled human words, and they were not miracles. For that reason, they were defiled, and soon change. But the Quran is one of the greatest miracles of Hadrat Muhammad, and it is unlike human words. These facts are written in detail in the hundredth letter of the third volume of Maktubat by Imam Rabani and in the books, Pujatulahi, Alal Alameen and Shari Marwahib, by Zarkani. Once every year Hadrat Jebrail Gabriel would come to our Prophet, and recite to him, the part of the Quran, that had been revealed until that moment in accordance with its order in the La al mafas and our master, the prophet, would listen to it and repeat it. In the year when he, the prophet, would honor the hereafter, Jebrail came twice reciting the whole of it. Hadrat Muhammad and the majority of his Ashab memorized the whole Quran. Some of the Ashab memorized some sections of it and wrote down most of its other sections. In the year when Hadrat Muhammad his salam, honored the next world with his presence, Abu Bakr, the Khalifa, gathering though. She who knew it by heart and uniting the written parts together, formed a committee to write down the whole of the Quran on paper. Thus, a book, a manuscript, called a Mus'hab was formed. 33,000 Ashab of the Prophet decided unanimously that each letter of the Mus'hab was precisely in its correct place. The surahs, chapters were not separated. Hadrat Uthman, the third Khalifa, separated the surahs from one another in 25 AH, after Hijri, he put them in their order. After having six more mushafs written, he sent them to Bahrain, Damascus, Egypt, Baghdad, Kufa, Yemen, Mecca and Medina. The mushafs all over the world today have been reproduced by copying these seven. There is not even a points difference amongst them. Can the Quran al Karim be translated? The Quran al Karim cannot be translated into any language, even into Arabic. It is impossible to translate any poem into its own language precisely. It can only be explained, interpreted. We should not read the Quran's translations in order to understand it. To understand the meaning of an ayat means to understand what Allahu Ta'ala means through this ayat. A person who reads a translation of this ayat cannot learn murad ilahi, the divine meaning. He learns what the translator has understood according to his level of knowledge. And he who reads the translation written by someone ignorant or by an irreligious translator, learns not what Allahu Ta'ala says, but what the translator, who assumes that he understands it, it expressing from his own thoughts. Allahu Ta'ala declares in the Quran al Karim, my book is in Arabic. He declares, I sent the Quran down to Hadrat Muhammad in the Arabic language. Then, the totality of the words, letters and meanings which Allahu Ta'ala sent down through an angel is the Quran. The books that are not so cannot be called, the Quran. He who calls these books, the Quran will lose his Iman, he will become a disbeliever. If it is translated into another language or even into Arabic it is called an explanation of the Quran. Also, if one of its letters is changed even without the meaning being defiled, it is not the Quran anymore. 
Moreover, if any change is made in reading it without any letter being changed, it is not called the Quran. Translations of the Quran in other languages are not called the Quran. They are called Mayral or explanations of the Quran. If they have been prepared by devout Muslims who are experts and who have good intentions towards the subject, they can be read in order to understand the meaning of the Quran. There is nothing wrong in this. They cannot be read as the Quran itself. It does not yield thawab to read them as the Quran. On the contrary, it is a sinful act to do so. Muslims should read the Quran as Allah Ta'ala revealed it. It yields thawab also to read it without understanding the meaning. Certainly it is all the more blessed and better to read it and to understand the meaning. The explanations made under the light of former tafsirs may be called mer al explanations rather than translations. It is not permissible to consider the words used to contain the meaning of the Quran al karim as equal to the Quran itself or to recite these words in namaz, salat, or to use them to deduce hukum, judgments without having first grasped the original properly. A translated version could never replace its original. There are expressions words in the Quran al karim that have various meanings. In the process of translation all the various meanings are reduced to one meaning and it cannot be known whether this meaning is the meaning Allahu Ta'ala is express. Ing murad ilahi. Therefore, one should not dare to call it the translation of the Quran. Translating the Quran al karim into another language, and substituting the translated version for the Quran al karim are two different issues. Written in the preface of the Turkish Mer al of Quran al karim prepared and published in 1381 AD 1961 by the Directory of Religious Affairs in Turkey. The first translation of the Quran in Europe was rendered into Latin in 537, 1141 AD. It was translated into Italian in 919, 1513 AD, into German in 1025, 1616 AD, into French in 1056, 1647 A. D, and into English in 1057, 1648 AD. Today there are about 30 translations in all these languages, but in these translations made by individuals with certain tendencies, there are many wrong interpretations and even purposeful errors. It is permissible to translate the Quran into other languages, yet one cannot learn all the rules of the Islamic religion from a translation. There are also other rules, which were determined through hadith e sheriffs, e ishma, and kiyas. These are learned in detail from books of fiqh, which were written by the scholars of Ali Sunnit. So highly esoteric are some teachings of the Quran al karim that the meanings have been comprehended only by our blessed Prophet, who in turn explained them to his Sahaba. His utterances explaining the Quran al karim are termed hadith e sheriffs. All the Islamic teachings in the books are merely explanations of the book, that is the Quran al karim the Sunnat, that is the hadith e sheriffs and the aforesaid e ajma and have nothing to do with personal for. HTS and views. The onerous work those valuable scholars undertook has been termed kiyas, or ejihad, and the scholars themselves are called scholars of Ali Sunnah. It is those blessed people, Ramaratullahi Ta'ala Alaihim Ejmar in, who conveyed to us the Islamic religion in its pristine purity without a tiniest change. How to learn the meaning of Quran al karim A person who wants to understand, to learn the real meaning of the Quran must read religious savants' books on Kalam, its lexical meaning is word, speech, fiqh, and morals. All these books have been derived and written from the Quran and Hadiths. Books written as translations of the Quran do not convey a correct understanding. They enslave the readers to the ideas and purposes of their authors and cause them to deviate from Islam. The Quran al karim consists of divine rules. It is divine law. Allahu Ta'ala has shown the way of happiness to his born slaves through the Quran al karim and has sent his own word to the highest of mankind. 
Only Hadrat Muhammad can understand the meaning of the Quran al Karim. No other person can understand it completely. Though the Ashabi Karim, Ali Himur Ridwan, knew Arabic as the native language and were literary and eloquent, they couldn't understand Samayats and asked Rasulullah to explain them. One day, Umar, Radi Allahu An, saw Rasulullah, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi wa Salam, saying something to Hadrat Abu Bakr as he passed by them. He went near them and listened. Others also saw them, yet they hesitated to go and listen. The next day, when they saw Hadrat Umar they said to him, O oh, Umar, Rasulullah, Sallallahu Ta'ala, Alihi wa Salam, was telling you something yesterday. Tell us, so that we can know. He, the Prophet, always used to say, Tell your brothers in Islam what you hear from me. Let one another know. Hadrat Umar said, Yesterday Abu Bakr, Radi Allahu, An had asked him about the meaning of an ayat which he couldn't understand, and Rasulullah was explaining it to him. I listened for an hour, but I couldn't understand anything. He was explaining everything according to the high grade of Abu Bakr. Hadrat Umar was so great that Rasulullah said, I am the last prophet. No prophet will succeed me. If there were a prophet to succeed me, Umar would be that prophet. Though he was so great and knew Arabic very well, he was not able to understand even the explanation of the Quran. Rasulullah used to explain it according to the degree of the person he was talking to at the moment. The degree of Abu Bakr was much higher than Hadrat Umar's. But he, too, and even Hadrat Jebrail used to ask Rasulullah about the meaning, about the mysteries in the Quran. The book al Hadika, while explaining the disasters incurred by one speech communicates that Imam Suyuti wrote that Rasul. Allah explained the meaning of the entire Quran to the Ashabi Kiram. In short, only Hadrat Muhammad understood the meaning of the Quran and explained it in his hadiths. It is he who explained the Quran. The correct book of explanations of the Quran is his hadiths. By not sleeping or resting, by sacrificing all the free time, our religious scholars gathered these hadiths and wrote books of tafsir explanations of the Quran. The book of tafsir entitled Baydawi is one of the most powerful among them. To understand even these books of tafsir, it is necessary to learn the 20 main branches of knowledge well by working ceaselessly for 30 years. There are 80 subdivisions that are the branches of these 20 main branches of knowledge. One of the main branches is the science of tafsir. These branches of knowledge had different savants and myriads of books. Various Arabic words that are used today have different meanings in the science of fiqh than from the meanings which they have in the science of tafsir. Even the same word conveys various meanings, depending on its place in the Quran and the particles it takes. The Quran's translations by those who do not know these vast branches of knowledge are made according to today's Arabic convey meanings far from the meanings in the Quran al karim Everybody understands the hints, the meanings from the symbols in the Quran in proportion to the strength of his Iman. Tafsir is not something done simply by writing or by expressing in words. Tafsir is a radiance, nur, that occurs to the hearts of great religious men. The books of Tafsir are the keys to this radiance. As the jewels are revealed when you unlock the drawer with the key, in a similar way does a radiance occur to the heart by reading those tafsirs. Those who knew the eighty branches of knowledge well understood the tafsirs. And in order to explain them to religiously ignorant people as we are, they wrote thousands of books suitable for people of various categories. Valuable Turkish tafsirs such as Ma'arkib, Tibian, Abulis are among them. Tibian is a tafsir that was prepared in 1110 after Hijri. The tafsir by Vibi Effendi of Konya is a book of preaching. Since there are parts containing personal views in all those newly written books, which are considered to be the most valuable, the harm is greater than the benefit to those who read them. 
especially those tefsirs and translations by enemies of Islam and by holders of bid'ah, which have been written to defile the meanings in the Quran al karim are fully harmful. These are all poisonous. Today, it is seen that many people offer such defiled translations and books under the name of the Turkish Quran. These books of dubious origin are given to youngsters and distributed in villages. They say, the Arabic Quran is in a foreign language. Don't read it. Read this one, which is in our native language. When observed carefully, it is understood that many of those who say so do not perform the a fast, that they have dived into the harams and even into irreligiousness, and that they are bonded to Islam only in words. For understanding the Quran, it is necessary to know Quraysh Arabic, not today's Arabic. For understanding the Quran, it is necessary to wear out the elbows with studying for years. We should understand it by reading the tafsirs, the explanations written by Islamic savants who have understood it by studying so. Youngsters who read the jerry-made translations will consider the Quran as a book consisting of mythological stories, unnecessary and useless thoughts, or only ordinary words. Taking a dislike to the Quran, to Islam, they will become disbelievers. That seems to be a new stratagem, a new trick of Islam's enemies in their efforts to misguide Muslims and murder's children towards an irreligious education by duping them into reading translations of the Quran al karim and for that end they exploit all sorts of casuistry, such as, read the Quran in pure Turkish. Do not read the Arabic Quran, which is in a foreign language.